Hello my dear friends, this is Dr. Azam here, Faculty of Anatomy <coughs> at an academy platform. And now, uh, today we are going to discuss about one of the topic, that is the types of joints we are going to discuss guys. This is like one of, the one of that topic where you know the questions will be asked in almost every exam, every competitive exam, whether it is like NEET, PG or AIMS, JIPMA. In every exam there will be a question from this topic. But the problem with the students, thinking that it's like easy topic, you know, they'll just let it go. But remember, it can fetch you one mark, okay? So let's discuss about the types of joints in detail today, guys. So let's get started. <clears throat> now the first thing that you should remember as a medical student that, yes, how many types of joints do we have, guys? Remember, we have got like three different types of joints. And these three different types guys please start from the immovable and go towards the mobile joint so the joint which is immovable joint will be known as the fibrous joint the immobile type of joint is known as fibrous joint and then partially mobile joint will be your cartilaginous joint which is partly mobile joint and then freely mobile or completely mobile joint will be your synovial joint so these are the only three types of joints that you have to remember in your mind so remember from today onwards that how many types of joints do you have guys? Three types. I repeat once more. If it is like immovable joint, it will be a fibrous joint. Partially mobile joint will be the cartilaginous variety, cartilaginous joint. And then completely mobile joint will be the synovial joint guys. Okay, there are three categories or three types of joints. Once you are perfect with the type of joint and now let us discuss about the subtype. Okay. <clears throat> now under this fibrous category guys, there are actually three subtypes. There are three subtypes of that. I'll tell you uh, tell, tell you about that joint and then you just think about that one. Can you just think about like what is the joint between between the cranial bones, between your cranial bones and all? What is the type of joint? That is sutures. Now just think about that. Are the sutures like mobile? Not at all. Are they partially mobile? No. They're like completely immobile. So therefore sutures, I'll be keeping in which category guys? They are kept under the category of fibrous joint. So fibrous joint will be including what? Sutures. Number two, second category, yes. The joint between the tooth and the socket. The joint between the tooth and the socket. That joint is actually known as gomphosis. Fine. Gomphosis. So gomphosis joint, the joint is between the tooth and the socket. And remember, even that joint is also like immovable joint. So I'm placing that, that under which category? Fibrous joint. And the third category of joint here will be the syndesmosis. So guys, don't worry about, you know, each and every type of that. First of all, I'm giving you an overview, complete glance of this one, and then we'll go with individual categories. So first you should have a complete picture in your mind. So fibrous joint is immobile joint and immobile joint will be interned into three categories. Number one, the joint between the cranial bones will be sutures. The joint between the tooth and the socket will be gomphosis. Okay. And the third category will be syndesmosis. I'll tell you about that one in detail later on. Don't worry about that. Now, once you're done with that, next welcome to the second type of joint that is cartilaginous joint. Cartilaginous joint are in turn divided into two categories, guys. One will be the primary cartilaginous joint. Then the other one will be the secondary cartilage. I'll learn that there are three types of joints and then learn only the three subtypes in fibrous. Then learn the two subtypes in cartilaginous. And apart from that, any other joint that you know in your life will come under which category guys synovial category understanding here so whatever remaining types of joints like ball and socket joint hinge joint ellipsoid saddle pyoid plane condylar whatever all that remaining comes under which category synovial they're all like freely mobile joint that's the best way to learn so learn the few joints which are fewer subtypes and the remaining everything comes under synovial category are you understanding the planning here right now Hope you're getting it crystal clearly. And now today, my dear friends, what we're going to do is we are going to discuss about the fibrous joint in detail and the cartilaginous joint in detail today with all the examples. Examples are important. That will be asked in the exam. We're going to learn about these two joints today and synovial joints I'll take up tomorrow. Fine. So that's our entire planning about the types of joints. So let's study Ram se. Okay. So now let's get started with your fibrous joint. So guys, fibrous joint is in turn how many categories? Three categories, the sutures, the gomphosis, and syndesmosis. So let us study about all the three of them one by one. First, I'm going to deal with the sutures right now, guys. Fine. <clears throat> 
So what about the sutures or what you have to learn about the sutures? Yes, look here. There are certain important questions asked in the previous exam. So let us deal in detail. Now these sutures, they're in turn divided into different, different categories based on the ends of the bone. For example, let me give you the first one. So there'll be like plain sutures. Okay, the plain sutures. So what is the meaning of the plain sutures guys? It's very, very simple guys. It's all based on the ends, the bones which are the margins of the bone, fine. Right? So for example, if this is like the end of the one bone or the margin of one of the bone, and if this is the margin of another bone, now these two margins, you can see just there, like straight or the plane, and these two are joined together with the help of, you know, fibrous tissue. Obviously it's a fibrous joint, immobile joint, so it is joined by fibrous tissue. That's all. That's nothing but the plane category, plane category of sutures. Now what will be the example of the plane type of sutures? Yes, it is nothing but internasal in between the two nasal bones, okay? That will be our plain category. Not only internasal, we can even include the interpalatine. Interpalatine. So internasal, interpalatine, in between the palate and between the nasal bones, it is actually a plain suture. Now it will be another second category. There is a one more suture, which will be like, you know, <clears throat> squamous suture. What is the meaning of this squamous suture? What will happen in this squamous suture is that, for example, this is the end of one of the bone and this is the end of the another bone. Now these two ends are like overlapping each other. And obviously these two are again connected by the fibrous tissue. It's very simple, take okay? So squamous suture will be like one bone overlapping the another bone slightly and they are connected by the fibrous tissue again. Now what is the example of this squamous suture is, yes, between the, you know, <clears throat> the temporal bone here and the parietal bone here. Okay, the parietal bone and the temporal bone. So temporoparietal. Temporoparietal. Temporoparietal suture, that will be the squamous suture guys. Temporoparietal suture, that will be an example of the squamous suture. Now apart from that, there'll be one more, that is nothing but your serrate one. Now, what is the serrate suture, guys? In the serrate suture, what will happen is that the okay, end of the one of the bone will be like serrated, and even the another end of the another bone will also be like serrated, and these two are joined together by the fibrous tissue. Okay, so they are like serrated ends, okay, and these two are joined by the fibrous tissue. And now, what is the example of this serrate suture? Yes, exactly in the middle here, you'll be having a sagittal suture, and that sagittal suture will be an example of the serrate suture. The sagittal suture will be an example of serrate suture. Now, the last one, one more important one will be the denticulate suture. Denticulate suture. Now, in this denticulate suture, what will happen is this is the end of the one of the bone and it will be having dentations. Okay. And in this dentation, what will happen? Another bone will come and fit here. Fine. So, this will be like denticulate suture. There will be dentations in most pictures, all the images of this one. So this is something really important. Why? Because already this has been tested in your previous competitive exams. So let us just repeat that again. The sutures are in turn divided into like, you know, different categories based on the ends of the bone, the margins of the bone. If the ends are plain, then it is plain suture. If the ends will be like overlapping squamous suture, and then if they are serrated, serrated suture, and then denticulate suture, and they're following examples here. Now, let me include one more here right now, guys. There's actually a special category of suture, actually, you know, a special type. And in this one will be the shindylasis. Shindylasis. And in shindylasis, what will happen is like a special category. It's actually between the rostrum of the sphenoid bone. And this rostrum of the sphenoid bone will be actually going and fitting in between the, okay, the alley of the vomer. So below you'll be having the alley of the vomer and in this the rostrum will fit, in that group the rostrum will fit. And this is the special type of, you know, suture will be known as the shindylysis. So this one here will be the rostrum of the sphenoid bone and this one will be the alley of the vomer bone. Sir. So those two will be fitting each other and that is nothing but shindylysis. So these are all the different types of sutures that you should know about, okay, now for your competitive exams. Now let me do one thing, let me show you all these images here right now guys. Now please look at this diagram here. Now in this diagram here, yes, here in between the two nasal bones, internasal suture. Yes, that will be of which variety guys? Internasal. Internasal suture will be plain suture, perfect. And this suture here will be the sagittal suture. 
and this sagittal suture comes under which category yes you can clearly see the margins are very much serrated that is nothing but serrated suture and here behind here this suture here will be the lambdoid suture and this lambdoid suture is an example of your denticulate denticulate suture and it is the strongest one okay now the dentations will be fitting of one bone will be fitting onto the other bone now on the other side here the parieto temporal suture will be an example of squamous suture so you have to remember all these examples and apart from that yes one more picture here one more image here for you people yes you can clearly see this is the rostrum of the sphenoid bone here right now and this rostrum of the sphenoid bone fits into the alley of the vomer and this is like a special category of the sutures that is nothing but shin dialysis clear this one here so if you are still along with me here right now guys what did i tell you today we are actually learning about this type of joint fibrous joint fibrous joint is entered divided into three categories the sutures gomphoses and syndesmoses now all of these three i think we are done with sutures perfectly in detail ho gaya completed now let's deal with the gomphoses in detail that's nothing but easier one guys it's just between the tooth and the socket and then i'll tell you about the syndesmoses examples i hope you are writing down all the examples along with me yeah perfectly now please look at this diagram here yes between the tooth and the socket yes this is connected with the help of this ligament here right now guys this is nothing but the periodontal ligament periodontal ligament and this is nothing but gomphoses and this is another type of you know fibrous joint now i think must to remember here right now the next one will be syndesmosis the third category now this is like one of the most important one many a times the examples has been asked here guys see <clears throat> If you look at this first picture here, first image here, in this image you can see the radius and the ulna. I can clearly see this bone here is the radius bone here, and this is the ulna bone here in the forearm. The radius and the ulna, these two are connected to each other in the middle here with the help of you know interosseous membrane. <clears throat> first of all, try to learn conceptually here right now. In the forearm here, this is the radius here, and this is the ulna here. Radio ulnar joint. They are actually of three categories. There will be one superior, then middle, and inferior. superior middle and inferior radio ulnar joint will be there and out of these three the superior and inferior will be of pyoid variety don't worry about that i'll tell you about that tomorrow tomorrow we are going to study about the synovial joint now today please concentrate on the middle radio ulnar joint the middle radio ulnar joint is yes joined together the two bones are joined together with the help of a interosseous membrane the name is meaningful inter in between osseous between the bones interosseous membrane and this is one of the most important example of syndesmosis so syndesmosis example number 1 remember it is middle radio ulnar joint next one now in this diagram you are able to see this is actually the tibia here and this will be the fibula these two bones present in your leg region tibia and fibula and in this the inferior tibio fibula joint this one here right now guys the inferior one inferior inferior tibio fibular joint tibio tibio fibular joint and that is another example of syndesmosis so please remember middle radio ulnar joint and the inferior tibio fibular joint are the example of syndesmosis then apart from that in this diagram you are able to see the sacrum in the middle and that sacrum is joining with the ilium part of the hip bone the hip bone will be having like three parts the ilium ischium and the pubis so the ilium part is joining with the sacrum behind that is sacro iliac joint and even there is also one of the example of your syndesmosis so i'll just write down here it is nothing but the sacro iliac joint sacro iliac joint another example of syndesmosis guys i hope it is very clear right now so let us do one thing here right now <clears throat> because we have learned about all the examples right now so let's do a revision of this one then we'll go ahead guys but because you know see i believe one thing it's not about just rushing and you know covering like lot of stuff and without even learning anything properly so it will hardly take a minute okay let us just first of all revise so what we have learned today joints are again divided into how many types guys three types immobile fibrous partially mobile cartilaginous joint and then completely mobile will be synovial joint now the fibrous joint immobile it is again divided into three categories the sutures and the gomphoses and syndesmoses sutures yes between the cranial bones they divide into like plain and then squamous serrated suture and then denticulate suture one of the special category shin dialysis then remember gomphoses is between the gum and the socket that is uh, sorry the tooth and the socket the easiest one and the last category will be syndesmoses syndesmoses is the joint between the two bones which are joined with the help of a interosseous membrane or interosseous ligament 
Example number one, middle radial nerve joint. Example number two, inferior tibiofibular joint. And number three, remember, sacroiliac joint. I think that completes about the fibrous joint, crystal clear. And now guys, <clears throat> the cartilaginous joint is in turn divided into two categories, that is primary and secondary. So first, let me teach you the differences between the two of them. There is a primary cartilaginous and secondary cartilaginous joint. First of all, I'd like you to remember the another name of this one guys, the primary cartilaginous joint and secondary cartilaginous joint. Primary cartilaginous joint is also known as synchondrosis. Synchondrosis. And the secondary cartilaginous joint is also known as symphysis. Okay, the primary cartilaginous joint will be synchondrosis. The secondary cartilaginous joint will be symphysis. <clears throat> Now, what is the basic difference between the primary and secondary cartilaginous joint? Let me tell you that. For example, this is the end of one of the bone here, and this is the end of another bone here. And these two bones are joined together in the middle with the help of a hyaline cartilage. Obviously, it is a cartilaginous joint. And cartilaginous joint will be formed by the cartilage. So here it is actually the hyaline cartilage, guys. So the ends of the two bones are joined together with the help of hyaline cartilage. Now, what about the secondary secondary cartilaginous joint, symphysis? So, for example, if this is the end of one of the bone here right now, and now these two hyaline cartilages, they are actually connected to each other in the middle, middle with the help of a fibrocartilage. This is actually the fibrocartilage part. Clear? So, first try to learn the basic difference between the primary cartilaginous joint and secondary cartilaginous joint. The primary cartilaginous joint will be also known as synchondrosis. Okay, synchondrosis and the two, uh, the ends of the two bones will be joined together with the help of simply hyaline cartilage. Whereas the secondary cartilage joint, the ends of the bone are covered by hyaline cartilage and those two are joined together by fibrocartilage part. Done, one thing. Now the second thing here, <clears throat> The second point that you have to remember here is that okay, this primary cartilaginous joint, what will happen, you know, over a period of time as the age of the person increases. <clears throat> so what will happen over a period of time as the age increases, this hyaline cartilage has got the ability to ossify. It will ossify. And therefore, what will happen as the age increases, it will ossify and it is going to become like, you know, the cartilage is going to ossify. So it's no more synchondrosis. Now it will take the shape of syn synostosis. Okay. Don't get confused with the names here right now, guys. What is the another name of the cartilage? Cartilage is also known as chondrus. That's the reason why it is synchondrosis. Okay, now. now, over a period of time, as the age increases, hyaline cartilage is going to ossify. It's going to become the bone. So bone ostium, that is why ostosis. Okay. So synchondrosis, it is going to become synostosis, ostium. Chondrus part is going to become the bone. That is the reason why, that's the reason why this primary cartilaginous joint is also known as, you know, temporary joint. It is actually a temporary joint. It's not a permanent joint. So after a certain age, it's going to ossify and become like a bone itself, synostosis, temporary joint. Whereas on the other side, the secondary cartilaginous joint will be a permanent type of joint, guys. It's of permanent type of joint. So this is the main important thing. First, try to remember the differences. Primary cartilage in the joint, the ends are connected by hyaline cartilage that will ossify with age and it is going to become synostosis, therefore known as temporary joint. Whereas the secondary cartilage in the joint, already it is joined by fibrocartilage there. That is why it is actually a permanent joint. Same thing here, primary cartilage joint and the secondary cartilage in the joint. What are the examples, guys? Primary cartilage in the joint, example number one, it is between the epiphysis and diaphysis of the long bone. Okay. <clears throat> so for example, if this is your long bone here right now, guys, the ends of the long bone will be known as the epiphysis here and the shaft is known as the diaphysis. In between this epiphysis and diaphysis, there will be a plate of cartilage, which is also known as the epiphyseal plate of cartilage. Or else it is also known as the epiphyseal plate of cartilage, also, also known as the growth, growth plate. And that joint with the help of this cartilage between the epiphysis and diaphysis, that is an example of primary cartilaginous joint. So the primary cartilaginous joint is between the epiphysis and the diaphysis with the help of that growth plate in the middle. Number one example. Any other example that you remember here for the primary cartilage joint? <clears throat> Number two, remember costo 
chondral joint costochondral joint the joint between the rib and the costal cartilage costochondral joint there is also an example of the primary cartilaginous joint and apart from that number 3 you can remember the joint between the sphenoid bone and the occipital bone sphenooccipital sphenooccipital joint theek okay? hai sphenooccipital joint guys <clears throat> so one between the epiphysis and diaphysis primary cartilaginous second number two between the costochondral between the ribs and the costal cartilage and the sphenooccipital occipital joint base your occipital so many different different words are there for that one <clears throat> so let me share first of all you know show you the images for this one guys just look at this diagram here right now now in this diagram yes you know it is actually as i told you the base is sphenoid the base is occipital you know basically between the sphenoid bone and the occipital bone it's an example of your primary cartilaginous joint and the fate as i told as i told you just now what is the fate of the sin chondrosis guys the fate of sin chondrosis will be synostosis another example of this primary cartilaginous joint will be yes the costochondral the costochondral joint the joint between the rib and the costal cartilage costochondral joint will be the cartilaginous joint joint will be the you know <coughs> secondary cartilaginous joint for example the joint between the manibrium sternum and the body of the sternum so number 1 i can write down here as manibrio sternal joint manibrio sternal joint and number two remember between the body of the sternum and the ziphoid process and that's nothing but the ziphy sternal joint ziphy sternal joint so manibrio sternal joint and ziphy sternal joint midline apart from that yes in between the vertebrae that is your intervertebral disc that's also an example of your <coughs> secondary cartilage joint and obviously don't forget about the one more midline joint between the two pubis bone from the sides that is pubic symphysis pubic symphysis guys theek okay? hai so the midline joints that is the manibrio sternal joint and the ziphy sternal joint and then remember the intervertebral disc here and then the pubic symphysis so all the midline the one word that you have to remember here is that the midline joint all the midline joints of your cartilaginous joint in the middle is it okay fine here uh, sorry secondary cartilage joint the symphysis type now here one uh, one thing where the students are having a confusion the controversy is that about the uh, you know uh, the symphysis menti the symphysis menti the mandible here the mandible here okay from both the sides will be coming and joining here and this is nothing but the mandibular symphysis i can use one more word mandibular symphysis also known as symphysis menti that is not an example of your secondary cartilage joint it is given very very clearly in the 41st edition of gray's anatomy the updated one okay fine here so i'll do one thing here <clears throat> are you perfect with this one here the primary and secondary cartilage joint examples let us just do a revision of that once more the primary cartilage joint will be between the epiphysis and diaphysis epiphysio diaphysial joint with the help of that growth plate in the middle and number two example here the costochondral between the rib and the costal cartilage and number three example here will be the spino occipital as i told you here we are having like you know two different categories there the base is sphenoid and the base is occipital joint yes this one here apart from that the secondary cartilage joint i think there is a easiest one to remember all your midline joint but remember about the you know symphysis menti the mental part of the mandibular bone symphysis menti here okay and now because you know many many students are trying to create a controversy different different things are given in different different books so therefore i'm having a screenshot of you know the 41st edition of the gray's anatomy it's given very clearly you can see here <clears throat> in this one so by the way if someone tries to confuse you you can give a reference here right now guys all symphysis occur in the midline all the symphysis the secondary cartilage joint will be in the midline but except the mandibular symphysis here mandibular symphysis is more of you know the sin ostosis type it is already ossified sin ostosis type so this is an exception don't confuse with that one previously a lot of confusion has occurred in that one guys is it okay so that completes the different different varieties or different different examples of cartilaginous joint and that completes about you know the two types of joints that i that i told you that we are going to discuss today so i'm done with the fibrous joint and the cartilaginous joint and with their you know sub types and their examples crystal clearly i hope there is no doubt in this one and even one of the controversial thing that is symphysis menti has also been clarified here right now guys okay so i'm just looking at your uh, these things here comments here right now <clears throat> Yes, the manubrium and the rib. Hemant is writing in the comment here about the manubrium and the rib. Don't worry about that, Hemant. Between the sternum and the rib, actually, it's actually a synovial joint, and that we are going to discuss tomorrow. It's actually of plain variety, and in that also we are having one exception. I'll discuss with you with you tomorrow. Fine, Hemant. 
<coughs> apart from that any doubts you can always uh, you know send me your doubts in the comment section i hope it is very clear and tomorrow we are going to discuss in detail about the synovial joint all the different varieties ball and socket and all and apart from that to end this session i would like to again uh, recall you uh, within few days we are going to begin with uh, the integrated course that is uh, keeping in view the recent neat exam conducted we are starting with the integrated vertical integration of anatomy with physiology and all those things and the first topic that we are going to begin in the integrated course is actually the cns physiology I'm sorry cns uh, part central nervous system part in which the anatomy part i'll be dealing the physiology part will be done by the physiology faculty and all those things so we are trying to bring that pattern uh, where in uh, your examiners are trying to question nowadays so that will be helpful for your uh, you know the aims exam which is probably in the may and then apart from that the nimhans exam and all so i'm going to deal with the neuroanatomy wala part in detail starting from the scratch like the brain spinal cord and all we are going to discuss about the higher things like tracts basal ganglia and how do you apply that for the brain stem you know uh, the syndromes and all those things i'll teach you in detail don't worry about that so we'll we'll meet again tomorrow we'll discuss about the synovial joint in detail tomorrow any more doubts you can ask me here otherwise we can end the session here right now guys fine so no more comments no more doubts here right now guys so i'm ending the session here for today so let's meet tomorrow again bye bye take care stay blessed stay happy